Okay, when Reb is my modem, Chelek Aleph, the Maimer, Maim Rabim, we're on page Nun Gimel. That's where we're up to now. I'm um, in the middle of the page. Okay, um, at the beginning of the Maimer, the Altreb asked the question, how do you reconcile the two interpretations? The Maim Rabim, one is that the Goyim want to extinguish us and Hashem doesn't let us. And the Goyim are saying the Jews sin just as much as we do. And Hashem says, well, they're little kids, it doesn't matter. And then, how do you reconcile this Rebbe's without Rebbe's interpretation of Mayim Rabim that it refers to the love that a Jew has to Hashem? Uh, the only thing that could extinguish the love is actual, uh, quench, not extinguish, to quench the love is only actual term mitzvahs. Okay, so the Rebbe started the saying, three interpretations of the word echad, okay? Hashem says to the Jewish people, you praise me with Hashem echad, I'm going to praise you with the word echad, goy echad ba'aretz. So the Hashem is called echad, and the, goy, uh, the Jews are called echad. And the Rebbe said, there's three interpretations of the word echad. One is that there's no Aved Zara, okay? Um, or well, the first thing, that there's nobody like Hashem, Second one is to exclude Aved Zara, and the third one is to exclude Shittuf. And Reb is in the middle of explaining now what Aved Zara is. Okay? That the Goyim come along and they say that Rama Ko Goyim Hashem, Hashem is removed from the world, the world is too great, too low for Hashem to be present at. And they say the following The higher worlds, the higher spiritual worlds, that's where Hashem could be. Alashemayim kveda, Hashem could be in the heavens, but Oretz, that's a mashpili leres, that's a, that's a descent. Because they say Hashem created the world cause and effect. Okay, so it's higher, lower, 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 lower. So therefore, they say higher is higher than lower, and therefore Hashem could be in the higher world; it can be in the lower worlds. But the Rebbe is explaining this, we're in the middle of now, that that's not true. Because by Hashem, Hashem is so great that Shemayim and Oretz, Hamashpili Lirais, he looks down. It's a descent for Hashem, even heaven and earth, because the world was created Yeshmiayin, or like we learned last week in simple English. Hashem is infinite. If Hashem is infinite, one and a trillion trillion are the same. So just like Hashem could be and a trillion trillion, Hashem could be on earth also because it's, 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 the same, it's exactly the same thing compared to Hashem. They say Hashem is finite, created the world level, 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 and therefore it makes sense that higher is higher and lower is lower. So Hashem could be in the higher world, not in the lower world. That's what we're in the middle of now. Okay? Um, Okay, we're going to start again. Anun Gimel, like 10 lines in the top of the page. He says, because they say that Hashem created the world, Elova, all cause and effect. Therefore, Hashem only deals with the higher worlds, and the lower worlds, He gives into the hands of the constellations, the Kachovim, Mazolus, and all that. But so the Rebbe says, but it's not true. Why? Hashem is so infinitely great that for him, heaven and earth is both a descent. Meaning, because Hashem is so great in a way of avdola, of separation, therefore, as far as infinite is concerned, heaven and earth are exactly the same. And therefore, because even the heavens is worthless. Because like we said, compared to infinite, a trillion, trillion is also nothing. Because creation is not created. The world was not created. The world was created yeshmiayin. Something from nothing. The world cannot be created ilavalu. And he says, Okay? You can have even the highest of levels. The, even, the, the Rebbe is speaking even in Ruchnius. But, for instance, take Ruchnius, yeah, and lower, 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 lower. No matter how many times you're going to lower it, you'll never come to physical. Because physical and spiritual, you can get very low spiritual, but you can't get physical. 
Okay, as far as Hashem is concerned, like we learned many times, spiritual and physical are both nothing compared to Hashem. So even or even spirituality is also nothing compared to Hashem. The gamet siyasa or even or the creation of revelation of Hashem is dafkai they tzimtzum shoya be'erin tzav is also only through a concealment. We're going to read a bunch of lines. I'll explain this. The ha'ad ha'kolu batzmusei, because ad, the way it is in the source, ain't a bechinus ad klal, is not at all the level of ad. I'm going to explain. The commission calls it bezayad. The lav inun nahedin, it's not light in the source. Or commission calls it bezayv shalbein like the Alter says in Sharet Shayuchet Vamuna. But Marshall Irv is ziv hashemish b'shemish, the way the rays of the sun. Are in the sun, and the ele b'shem er v'ziv klal. It's not at all light. Meaning like this: even what's light? Light is a revelation of something. Okay. Now, obviously, we're talking ruchnius, so we're talking about Hashem. But let's use gashmius to kamosho that the Rebbe is using to, to try at least to understand this. Now, the Rebbe says in Tanya in Sherech of Amuna that if the rays of the sun. If the light of the sun could shine all the way to earth, 93 million miles or close to it, there's no question that in the sun itself, there's light. There's odd. But, but, the light of the sun in the sun is not called light. It's only called sun. Because of the source is there, the essence of the sun is there, there's no light. Light is a separate entity. When is light light? When it leaves the sun, that's when it becomes light. But the way the light is in the sun, it's all it is is sun. Nobody looks at the sun and says, oh, there's the sun and light. Over there is only sun. Where does light begin? When it leaves the sun. The same thing as Ruchnius. In Hashem himself, in the essence of Hashem, there's no light, there's no revelation, it's the essence. When does revelation begin? When it leaves the essence of Hashem. So that the Rebbe is explaining that world cannot be created, cause and effect, meaning level to lower level to lower level to lower level, because even the original revelation of Ard also has to come about through Tzimtzum. Meaning, it has to leave the source. It leaves the source in a certain particular way, a certain particular level, and that's when it becomes Or. In fact, there are times in Chassidus that Chassidus says the sunlight coming out of the sun, they call it Yashmiyayin. Why? Because now the light is light. Now it's a Yash. But the way it is in the sun, it's only the sun. It, the light doesn't exist there. It's there, but it doesn't exist. It's completely bottled. So therefore, when sunlight leaves the sun, it's a, so to speak, yeshmiyayin. It's a symptom. It's a limitation, a concealment from the sun to be able to create the light. Therefore, l'chein, this is the Kabbalah language, gilu yakav me'erin tzof anikra yeshmiyayin. The gilu yakav, which is the first level after symptom addition, is called yeshmiyayin because the kav, which is a ray of revelation, right? The kav, which is a revelation, the way it is in the source is called ayin. Okay, like it says in the Kutatayra. The kal shikain, that's even odd. How much more so when you're talking about kalim, the vessels of the odd. Uh, therefore, adam kadman ak is called adam de bria de chlolis, because over there is kalim, and therefore it's the level of bria, and it's called as chashis dover. Okay, I mean, I can explain this. It's a bunch of Kabbalah. Bottom line is, the levels of Elokus, of Revelation, began when the Tzimtzum Arishan happened. Whatever that means. Okay, Hashem removed all the light to the side. We revealed the Kav. I mean, we revealed a limited level of Revelation that would allow worlds to exist. What's Kav Kav literally means a line. Okay, you want to learn a little vocabulary words? We'll learn a little vocabulary words. So, the beginning of Eitzchayim of the Arizal, okay, the beginning of Eitzchayim, it says, 
בתחילה בשלום מחשבתי להתברך לברא אילום The beginning when Hashem wanted obviously there's no time then when Hashem wanted to create the world was only infinite revelation of Hashem okay if you have an infinite revelation of Hashem so you can't create a limited world if only unlimited is revealed correct so what did he have to do so it says Silak Atzme Kaviochal al Atzad. Hashem moved himself away. He, I'll explain what it means. It doesn't mean he left. He removed himself away. And re, because, as is, if there's infinite revelation of Hashem, only infinite is revealed. You can't create finite. Right? The revelation of infinite doesn't allow an existence of finite because they're opposites. So what did Hashem have to do? He had to remove all his infinite revelations and re-reveal or reveal the power of limitation that he had to create worlds. So he re-revealed what's called a kav, which is a line, which is only a limited level of a locus, And that allowed world to exist. Because now the limited level of Hashem is revealed. Got it? When infinite was revealed, finite couldn't be revealed, because infinite is revealed. So Hashem removed the infinite, and then okay, to give a gashmisti commercial for this, that we should understand it a little bit. It doesn't mean, by the way, Hashem checked out, because Hashem's all over. You have a brilliant, brilliant professor. Okay? His math, okay, he's a brilliant, super brilliant guy in math. His math is in abstract, con- difficult, uh, complex concepts. Yeah? Now he wants to teach first grade math. Okay, now, he compared, it, it's not real, but compared to the first grade math, his math is infinite. I mean, relatively speaking, it's infinite. So what is he going to cut it in half? Cut it in half is also not going to be able to teach the kid. What does he need to do? He has to, so to speak, forget everything he knew for a little while. That's not that it's not there. His infinite wisdom of math is not revealed. He pushes it away. He forgets it for a minute. Now he's able to re-reveal to the kid the first grade math. Understand? Because if he's going to talk his level... There's not going to be any kids. I mean, there's not going to be any understanding. It's way over their heads. They get nothing. So he has to forget everything he knows, so to speak, for a minute, re reveal his limited mathematical skill, and then the kid is able to learn. So the Rebbe is explaining that even that original art that created light had to come about through Tzimtzum. So you can't say Hashem created the world cause and effect, and therefore there's a concept of higher or lower. The whole world is created in a way from the infinite Hashem comes Yashmiyayin. So therefore, if it's Yashmiyayin, that's infinite in relationship to finite, so then the lowest level, earth, and the highest level, heaven, is all the same thing. Isn't that cap also a cause and effect? No. The calf came about Yeshmi Ayin. He had to remove himself, Ayin, and then he was able to be revealing the Yesh Mi Ayin. No, way above it. Way, way, way above. Okay, like the Ramak writes, okay, the Ramak writes like this. Four lines in the end of the page. The Yesim Mishayin Arech Asiyah Legabi Akeser that the Ramesh Kodavara writes that more than the distance from Asiya, the lowest level of the world, to Keser, which is the highest level, much more than that is Keser to, to compare to God. Okay? Meaning, in this world, the lowest level compared to the highest level is less change than Keser to... Why? Because this is finite, this is finite. So yeah, it's a b- trillion times, but it's still finite. This is... Finite compared to infinite. So Hashem is nothing. 
Okay, just skip the parentheses. Next page. Vinimsa. Okay, so this is now back down to earth. Vinimsa nundalit. Gamma madrega yeso yenus. Therefore, even the heavens, even the highest levels, are hashpala legabea descent as far as Hashem is concerned. Therefore, kshem shala shemaim kvede. Therefore, just like they agree, the philosophers, that Hashem controls the heavens, so the same way, according to Chesidus, according to Teda, then he controls it, because earth and heaven are the same thing. If he can control heaven, then of course he can control earth, because heaven and earth, compared to him, are the same thing. That there's a shkoch of pratis. Meaning, the Rebbe is explaining, interesting, <coughs> that Aved is when you deny Hashkoch Pratis. That's the definite, but the way the Rebbe is learning it, other places differently. But here the Rebbe is learning that what's Aved Dezada? They say, God has nothing to do with the earth. Hashem is in the heavens only. And therefore, the earth has nothing to do with Hashem. And therefore, Hashem is not Hashkoch Pratis on earth. So he said, that's Aved Dezada. Because the truth is, if you believe in Hashem, then you understand that there is Hashkoch Pratis in every single creature. Every single creature, not only in mankind. And we'll learn a little bit more and I'll explain this at greater length. I wanted to ask you, is Ilha Alel in a modern language, is that evolution? Ilha of all is cause and effect. Um... Well, even that, even you say evolution, that Hashem created a monkey and then uh, the people come from monkey, but how did he create the first monkey? It's also yesh, to a certain extent, yesh miyayin. They just say, uh, the people evolved from whatever. But the original one, they could also believe maybe is yesh miyayin. So it's not the same? No. So, ila ve'alol means a yesh miyesh? Yes. <laughs> Yesh, miyesh, the, si- the simple example Chassidus gives for yesh, ilo va'olu, seichel and midis. Seichel stimulates midis. A baby has babyish midis because their seichel is immature. An adult officially has more mature seichel, so more mature midis. Okay? So seichel stimulates midis. Therefore, seichel is the ilo, the cause. The midas are the olul, the effect. Therefore, they're connected. The olul is connected to the ilo, and the ilo is connected to the olul. Because based on the seichel is how much midas you have. Yesh miyayin, on the other hand, the yesh and the ayin have absolutely nothing in common. Okay? Now, the hishtaushilis of the four worlds, once you start from atzilis, Bria, Yitzir, Nasiya, and you have the ten levels of Atzilis, and then it goes into ten levels of Bria, Yitzir, Nasiya, that already is Ilavalu. Chachma comes into Bina, and then into the Midas, into Malchus, and then Malchus goes into the next world. That's like a chain, right? When you have a chain, a necklace, a chain, yeah? So you can have a hundred uh, links, but the bottom line is the bottom and the top are connected. Because it's still cause and effect. It's, yeah, further, 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 but it's still connected. But Rabbi, all this is, is accurate in the, in the essence of Hashem, but in, in our eyes, there is always a cause and effect. We know that's not the it's not something about that. Well, exactly. Let, well, let's first see what he says, and we're going to discuss all that in a second. Okay, third line. Kedisi, Gemara, Chul, and Dafsamar, Gimel. The Gemara says in Chul, and like this. Speaks about Rabbi Yechinen over there. When he saw the bird called Shalach, it's the pelican. Bottom line is the bird that goes into the ocean and grabs fish, you know, with the long beaks. Amen. He said, when Rabbi Yechinen used to see the Shalach, Amen, Mishpatech to him, Rabbah. He said to Hashem, Your judgment is in the depth of the sea. Meaning, then when he saw Namola, like a little ant or weasel, or whatever it is, he said, what does that mean? Pirish Rashi. Shenemola, this little tiny ant, yeah? Has the same chayis as a, an elephant. It's alive like the elephant's alive. Okay? What is the first part of the passage that Rebbe is emphasizing? After him, Rabbi. 
and your judgment is even in the depth of the sea, that you prepare uh, that your judgment is in the depth of the sea, what, in simple English, what it means. There's a judgment on which fish, which bird is going to catch at which time. When he saw the shallow going to chapa fish, so he said, your judgment is even in the ocean, meaning there's a judgment on which fish is going to be caught by which bird. Okay, and he said, just two more lines, umizeh hevi rabbeinu nishma sein shuv, and that's a dalta rabbe, brought a proof in one of his debates, la'eis and sha'imim, to those people that say, ashkoch pratis is rak al min ha'adam, like the Rambam says, basically, that Ashkoch Pratis is only on mankind. Because again, what do they say? Mankind, okay, in the image of Hashem, there could be Ashkoch Pratis. Animals, inanimate, plants, Ashkoch Pratis is a descent for Hashem, just like the other people say. And he says it's not true, because what do you see from the Gemara? Sheri Bidgas Hayam, in the fish of the sea, which is not people, Yajdinu Mishpat, there's a judgment which fish should be caught at which time. Um, is a shaloch, and Hashem gets the shaloch ready, designates the shaloch. To catch which fish at which particular time. Yeah, because some fish eat bigger, the bigger fish eat smaller fish, eat whatever. Hashem has a reason why he gets this fish. Okay, for whatever judgment it is. What do you see from there, though? You see from there that there's a concept of Ashkocha Pratis, not only on mankind, but on the lowest of the low. Why? Because reality is the highest of the high and the lowest of the low are exactly the same by Hashem. And if that's the case, there's a, just like there's Ashkocha Pratis on a person, there's a shkoch of protis on animals. Okay, but Hashem didn't give the tail to the fish, so there must be a difference. The difference in what? Shkoch of protis? I'm just saying, it's not clear to me the importance that... How come people fish. speak and, and, and stones don't? No, that's exactly my point. But there's shkoch of protis, that stones don't speak, and, <laughs> and people do speak. That is obviously shkoch of protis. One second. I don't understand the answer to your why. It's not clear to me why Hashem gives a shkoch of protis that, mm-hmm. that bird should take that fish. What, what do you see from there? Yeah, why? That there's divine providence at which fish should be caught. Now what's the reason? Once I, that's the why the reason. Bottom line is, is there destiny from Hashem on that particular fish to be caught? Yes? That means Hashem has a shkoch of protis, not only on people, but even on the fish. Why it's not relevant now? But the bottom line is, there's a shkoch of protis on fish. Just like there's a shkoch of protis on people. Why? It's interesting. There's a whole kuntus. It's printed back to the Sikh Schelik Vov. Before the Rebbe became Rebbe, he wrote a whole thing on a shkoch of protis to Rabbi Greenglass from Montreal. It's like 30, 25, 30 pages. And the Rebbe explains all the different opinions of shkoch of protis and the way they really, in essence, all agree with the Balshamtiv's thing. The Balshamtiv was the one that said a shkoch of protis is on every single thing. The Rambam, in fact, writes that Ashkoch Pratis is only a mankind. But the Rebbe explains it that the Rambam does The Rebbe means there's more Ashkoch Pratis on mankind than on, on, on other things, but not that there's no Ashkoch Pratis. But the Rebbe explains why it must say there's Ashkoch Pratis in every single creature. And the reason is very simple. Like that, the Rebbe explains Shayyach Vamuna. This machine, if it doesn't have a power of Hashem in it keeping in existence, it doesn't exist. It, dis- it disappears, right? So the fact that this thing is existing is because there's a power of Hashem in it. Therefore, if it moves, where it moves, how it moves is Oshkocha Pratis. That's what Dalt Rebbe explains in Tanya Shaykh Ramuna. So therefore, the Rebbe explains, the Rebbe is defining what Aveda Zara means. Aveda Zara is when you say that Hashem, in other words, it's interesting. Aveda Zara, the Rebbe says, doesn't mean there's no God. Aveda Zohar, the Rebbe says, does not mean there's no God. On the contrary, seemingly, they hold God in very high esteem. They say that Hashem is so great, 
he can't uh, direct and control earth. And therefore he leaves it over to the Kachov and Mazal. Huh? Beneath. It's beneath him. Which if you think about it, they, their intent is good because they want to give Hashem a lot of respect. He's so great, how can he deal with the garbage? The reality is, that Chassidus explains, and the Rebbe is explaining here, that garbage and the highest levels of who knows what, they're all the same level compared to Hashem. <clears throat> so if there's a Shkoch Pratis on the highest levels, there's a Shkoch Pratis on the lower levels. But a person who doesn't believe that and says there's only a Shkoch Pratis on heaven, but not on earth, that's a Veda Zodah. That's why anger is a Veda Zodah? Huh? Is that the reason that anger is because you did well, that Rebbe explains in Gersakaj, because at that moment you're denying Ashkoch Prat is correct. Okay, and he says, Ube Medrash Vayishlach, okay, in the Medrash, in Medrash Rabbi it says, the Gam Tsipa mi Baladi Shemaya, even a bird without the heavens, Le Mitstade, wouldn't be captured or yes, captured. He says like this, Basko Yaitzi, the Medrash says like this, a voice comes out from heaven, Dimus. Demus Sapkula means it's either going to die or live. That means the Medrash says also, even a bird, whether it's going to be caught or not, is also a voice coming from Hashem. Okay, and he says, So now the Rebbe is asking a question from a Gemara on what he just said. The Gemara says in Aved Zara, a posk vetason could get a yam. The posk says Hashem is going to make people like the fish. What do you mean people like the fish? Ma dogen shebe yam, just like fish. Call have godol mechavere belea. It says in Pirkei Avos, you should daven for the welfare of the community, b'shlemish shemalchus of the kingdom. Shemal malei mayra ishes rei chaim below. Everybody would swallow each other up. And the Batanur, the Mefarshim explain. Just like the big fish eat the little fish, if, you, if there wouldn't be law and order, then everybody would kill each other. You're more powerful. You just go around killing everybody and stealing and doing, doing whatever you want. So L'chayre, he says, Ma dagnish, av b'nei adam, the same thing people, so L'chayre means there's no Ashkoch Pratis. He said, no. Ain't that b'lay dinu mishpat. When a big fish eats a little fish, it's also with judgment. When a person beats up or kills or steals from a, a lesser person, lesser, whatever, it's also with the dinner mishpat kiim akol bashkochasi with dinner mishpat because everything is with divine providence. Meaning, what is again? What does it mean that there's Hashem in the world? No avedizara. And by the way, this a guy has to believe too, because guy mamochiv and avedizara. He has to believe there is a That's according to this, yeah. Wow. So not in other places in Chesidus it says not like that, but whatever. This is what it says here. So up until the Baal Shem Tov came out <clears> with this, there were Chacham and Ge'onim that, that thought differently? That's a long time. It took 20 years, yeah. 50 years ago. Um, well, That's a long yeah, time. I mean, so, so what is it Who said mean? they didn't believe in it? Maybe they did. They did? wasn't publicly taught. There are many great people that believe in Simpson Kipshute, that Hashem actually, not that he removed himself, but, you know, cut himself in half and all that. There are great tzaddikim, that Rebbe calls him the Torah Samin of Apikorsim that made a mistake of Simpson Kipshute. I don't know. Vizel, and that's what it says, every mispal of Yishlaim is Shomachus. No, I'm sorry, skip the line. Varaya, Shalei Meidemizah, from the fish we learn, the Gamba Odom, that even by people one big beats up the next, right, the, great, the more powerful ones. And by people, everybody agrees as Ashkach Pratis, because the person is creating the image of Hashem. Vizel, have him mispal of Yishlaim is Shomachus. This is what it says, you should have him for the welfare of the government, Shomamoli Meroi. If it wouldn't be for the fear of the government, but it would be done with Ashkocha Protest. That means it's destined Y A eats up B. When Mikama came, nevertheless, so why are you davening if it's all coming from Hashem? 
Because this is what Hashem wants. It's like, God forbid, if somebody's sick, yeah, you daven for them. Why are you davening? Who made him sick? Hashem. He wants to heal them. He'll heal them. It's like, by the way, it's interesting. Without two words in Chumash, without two words in Chumash, a person would not be allowed to go to a doctor. You know, there are certain religions, Scientology, other... They, they Christian say you science. can't... Huh? Christian science. You can't go to uh, a doctor. Why? Because you're getting in God's way. God made the person sick. Who are you to undo what Hashem wants? You're going against the will of Hashem. If Hashem wants them to get better, get better. Yeah? Which L'chayla makes sense. For a from person, L'chayla makes sense. Why are you mixing it to God's business? The same thing with tzedakah. They asked, uh, asked Rabbi Akiva, why are you giving tzedakah? And Hashem wanted to make him poor. If you wanted him to have money, he should have given him. Why are you giving to? Why are you mixing the God? Basically, what's the question? Why are you mixing into God's business? What's the answer? Hashem says, "I want you to mix into my business." Without mikan, without this, that the doctor would allow to heal. Without those two words, it could be very possible in Yiddish. You wouldn't be allowed to go to a doctor. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Verapa, yurapa means the doctor, you have to pay the doctor bills. Mm. If you beat somebody yeah. up, you have to pay the five damages. <laughs> One of them is doctor bills. Okay. The name of me calls there. From here, this whole Megillah comes out. Sheyesh ka shkocha prati sala nivroim bucho pratu prati malahem. Okay? That there is divine providence and every single detail of every single creation. That means Hashem's existence is all over the world equally. Okay, but those people that worship the, the heavens and the stars and the moons and all that stuff, they don't believe and they deny Hashkocha Pratis on earth, and everything in it. And they said, Oz of Hashem is hard, it's Hashem leaves the world. Right? Like we said before. The Rebbe says, is So the Rebbe is defining Avedazara. If you don't, not you don't say there's no God. There is, what do they say? There is a God, but this God doesn't deal with earthly things. The Rebbe said that's Avedazara, and that's other Medishu was commanded. So when the word Echad, the Rebbe is explaining, one definition of Echad is to exclude Avedizara. So the Rebbe in this paragraph at great length explained what Avedizara is. You believe that there's a God, but God is only in the higher worlds, not in the lower worlds, and everybody down here is controlled by the constellation, the Kachovim, the Mazolis, uh, whatever. Um, I, I, I kind of understand, but it's hard for a young person to, to think that Avedizara cares what fish the bird is going to eat. It's hard for us to understand that that even matters. It's just or oh, which ant is going to survive your steps on the grass. You know, it's those very minute details of the world. It's hard for us to understand the meaning that Hashem is also involved in that. I think it's a hard uh, philosophical concept to, that Hashem really cares which ant is going to survive. That's exactly what they said. No, Why I, in the world would Hashem I care? That, I understand the idea, but my question is, is there any further explanation than that Hashem... <coughs> structure the world in such a way because that he has a even you know at the, the at the end of Pekayavis at the end of Pekayavis no 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 like what is it no. for Hashem that he does that I mean why did Hashem structure the world that so listen you no know, she's asking me about my question <laughs> right Hashem created everything for his glory another mission says Hashem didn't create anything in the world for no reason. Yeah? Now, when Chazal say a statement, it's literally a statement. Yes? Okay. When the Mishnah, oh, I'll get into the Kvayde in a second, but when the Mishnah says, Hashem did not create Dover Echod, not one thing in the world for nothing. Yes? Now, that means every single drop of water 
There's not one extra drop of water throughout the entire ocean system of the world of Earth that was created for no reason. There is not one blade of grass, one leaf on a bush or on a tree throughout the universe, yeah, that Hashem created without a reason. Because if not, that's then the Gemara is wrong. That means every grain of sand, every drop of water, every thing of earth, every whatever you call that, grain, grain of earth, whatever, sand, earth, whatever you want to call it, there is a reason why Hashem created it. Correct? Then comes along the second Mishnah and says, what do you mean God created for his glory? It's not an ego trip. You know, oh, he wants a lot of covets, so he has a, a big house, it's a law. Oh, you know what I mean? It's not like that. What it means, it means that everything that exists in the world was created to reveal godliness. That's why it was created, to bring out a level of godliness that something else couldn't bring out. Yes? Okay. Which means there is nothing petty when it comes to Elokus and Hashem because Hashem didn't even create one little, stupid, insignificant ant. Okay? So therefore, if this ant that you're talking about stepping on when you walk into your house or in the street, yeah, this little ant, there's a dinner mish, but which ant should be killed by you at the moment you step on it? Okay, so obviously this ant is important. But, but by the way, this is the concept that the Rebbe uses, the foundation of what the Rebbe explains. You come to a Jew, people say, okay, you put filling on with a Jew, in the street, or the woman, you get it to light licht once. Okay, big deal. What is this one little, tiny, little uh, act? What are you going to do for the world? And the Rebbe keeps saying that one, based on the Rambam, one thought, one speech, one action makes the whole world to good. How? How? But this is an explanation of it. Because everything that exists in the world was created by Hashem for a particular reason. At the end of the quote, one speech, one thought, one action. Machias, it's Atzmei, it's Kolem, says the world is equally balanced scale. You know that one. Can change the scale. Change for Machia means it forces the, uh, not uh, it. Uh, no, say <laughs> Machia means. Yeah, will tip the scale. Tip, uh, yeah, good. Tip the scale, uh, for good. If you do bad, it's going to tip the scale. So there's 7 billion people in the world. There's a whole universe out there. Okay, I'm going to have one lousy little thought. It's going to tip the whole scale of the universe. Come on. The answer is yes. Of course it is. <laughs> How? Because Hashem teaches us there's no such thing as something insignificant. It's the story with the Baal Shem. As I would say, good morning, Chachra. For you or for you being like, talking to a person you're trying to... For me. For, for you? Me. Really? Every, there's no insignificance. Oh, when you heard that the worm and the leaf and you learned the initial concept of the Shkafa Pratis, it didn't blow you away? Yeah. That My husband said that's what made him a chassid. When he learned that concept, it totally changed his whole... It really oh. changed his life. It's like he just had an awareness that he never had before. Mm. Okay. This and is he, the awareness that chassidus. Totally accepted chassidus. It's like... <coughs> Life but that all comes statement. from Chassidus. You don't get this from Gemara. But it's a it was such a life changing mm. statement. He said that's what turned amongst the many thousands of statements in Chassidus that that, that changed could change lives. Right. Okay. This is a huge one, though. Big. There's, There's a lot of huge people. ones. Okay. And one of the main concepts about Shem was a Shkocha It seems to be a, one of the main ones because if we would truly live our lives for Embracing the Shlachapatis, we would never be angry, upset, sad. That's right. That's right. right. Everything. Fight with anybody. Everything. It will be peace, totally, tranquility, inner peace. You can so, so Shlachapatis is a big deal. Good morning. Ah. No, so this nice is like to a, see you. This is like a foundation almost, I would say. Yeah. yeah
Yeah. But the yeah. other, the other. But not only that, the Rebbe is explaining like, here. The Rebbe is explaining here that not believing in Ashkocha Prat is a Vedazara, which even a guy is obligated to believe in. This is without even getting to Shitov. Shitov is coming up. Shitov like, takes it a step further. Partnership. We're going to see. He's going to explain what that means. Don't make such a big mission statement like we do. We mission. only have it. We learned this. This is like a major concept, major mission statement. The other guys, I never heard it. I went to Beis Yaakov all my life. Never heard it. It was just not something we spoke about. Okay, so therefore. We heard about Hashkacha Pratis, but not to the extent that we accept mm. it and learn it. Right. It's different. That's why you learn Chassidus. Why do you think the Rebbe Rashab writes that if you don't learn Chassidus, you're Chayiv Misa? Wow. Well, what that mean? You're supposed to get capital punishment. You did. <laughs> Not figurative, I'm not literally. Good is dead. Okay, Dalit. Okay, so for next week, by the way, your week's homework is to live as Kocha Protis. No anger, no fighting, no uh, wasting time. By the way, by the way, let me tell you another thing. Time is also creation of Hashem. Correct? If you waste time, you're also destroying a creation of Hashem. Yeah. Okay. But to read Ashgacha Pratis, <clears throat> we're still commanded to fix things, to go to a doctor, to Hashem told us. But he said, because ISIS. that's what the Rebbe writes, because that's what Hashem wants. That's the Ratzin yes. yeah. The Rebbe asked, the Rebbe asked a question, <clears throat> how is he telling people to Shnas Binyan to build, in the Shnas Binyan, when the Rebbe said everybody should build maestas and houses and everything, yeah? So the Rebbe said, I'm a Sheikh's coming, we're all going to Eretz Yisrael. Mm-hmm. Right? So, number one, everything's going with us to throw. But besides that, the Rebbe said, a person has to live. Yeah, Mashiach could come today. But you still have to live in the normal routine. You can't say, okay, I'm very sick. I'm not going to go to the doctor. Mashiach's coming tomorrow or today. And I'm going to get better. Why, why am I going to the doctor? That's against Torah. Aye, that means, does that mean that you don't believe in Mashiach? It doesn't mean you don't believe in Mashiach. But until that happened, this is the catchment like this, until the end, you also need. I told you, I, I was, you know, when people believe in Mashiach, does believing in Mashiach mean he's coming today? We say you believe in, yeah? He's coming. Uh, somebody was asked to Rebbe, I, it's, it was on dollars, I think, and it was print, I mean, it was on a video. It's a mind blowing, simple statement that Rebbe said. Somebody asked the Rebbe, is Mashiach coming today? It was a very interesting the way the person worded the question. If the Rebbe would say no, it means I don't know. So the Rebbe said to him, and this is a clarity and simple, the Rebbe's style of clarifying an issue with simple language. The Rebbe said, I believe Mashiach could come today. Doesn't mean Mashiach's coming today. If I come to you and say, me, say to you, okay, lend me a thousand dollars, and if Mashiach doesn't come, I'm not going to pay you back. Mm-hmm. Does that mean you don't believe Mashiach's coming? And therefore, you, you know, if you don't give me the $1,000, that means you're doubting Mashiach's coming? No, it doesn't. The Rebbe said, that Mashiach can come every day means I believe he could come today. Yes? That doesn't mean, therefore, I shouldn't do natural things of healing and making a living and building and, and, and going. Okay. Amnam Dalid. Inyana Shituf or Inyanachin. Shituf, that only a Jew is obligated in, the Rebbe said before, not a guy, is a different concept. The Gemara says, Gimel Shut from Ba'adam. There's three partners in the creation of a baby. Ava Aim, father and mother, obviously. So the Gemara says there's three partners father and mother, and Hashem who gives the Neshama, right? Father and mother create the body. Hashem gives the neshama. He says it's understood. The primary of the three is Hashem. Okay, because when the neshama, God forbid, leaves the body, the body, which is from the father and mother, becomes like an inanimate rock. Then the intellect doesn't think. The eye doesn't see. The old eyes doesn't listen, hear. Right? Everything else 
is finished. You're a hunk of meat. That's not functioning. The chelik, the gamba chelik avaim, and even in the parents' part of the body. You know, first of all, Hashem gives the neshama. The neshama is more important than the body because the nisham, body without neshama is nothing. He says even in the body part, the chelik is keachaliki. Kemaim razal, like the, the Madras says on the pasuk, ain't the Gemara says ain't to the kalikenu. We say it ain't kalikenu. You know, be kavod Hashem ain't to the kalikenu, ain't sayer the kalikenu. There's no artist like Hashem. Shetzar tzura b'tzeich tzura. He formed an image in an image, meaning clawless in you know a lot of bechlal. Even for a father and mother to have a baby comes from kaiach ain't tzav mamish. Comes in the power of Hashem, like he says. Like it says, Zochon the cave of Bram Vayivar Chaisam, a kameisher and beruch bechush. Like you see clearly, he has kama bnei Adam. There are many people. You go to they go they don't have children. They go to the doctor. The doctor says medically, there's nothing wrong with you. We just don't know why you don't have kids, right? Um, ain't shum vein and and yet they don't give birth. Why? Because the Elod comes in the power of Hashem. Okay, so that, what's the Rebbe saying? There's three partners in a person. Hashem, father, and mother. Who's the primary partner? Hashem is the primary partner. Number one, not only in the Neshama, but even in the body. Yet, but the Gemara calls the father and mother partners. Right? The Gemara doesn't say... Uh, Hashem is the creator of the baby, and there's a father and a mother. The Gemara said, Gimel should from Bar, means there's three partners. Partners mean, by definition, equal. And therefore, there's a mitzvah in the Aser Sadibris, Lechabdom, to honor them, like it says, Kabir Savich of Asimacha, to honor your father and mother. Why, Lechero, why do you have to honor your father and mother? Let me jump the gun a little bit. Because then, you'd have to honor the sun too. And the moon. Who gives us warmth? So, Lechaira, we should have to say thank you to the sun. Why do we have to honor father and mother? Because they have a choice to do it or not to do it. Okay? So, therefore, um, because the parents have a choice to get married, have kids, or not to get married and not to have kids. Like Amr Benazi, like Benazi said, whether he never got married or married and got divorced, he said, Ma, I said, what do you want me to do? I can't deal with wives and kids. I want to learn a whole day. So he either never got married or he married Rabbi Kiva's daughter and divorced her. Therefore, the reason why the child exists was up to the parents. They had a say in the matter. They had a say in the matter. You can have a woman that can have a child and a man that can have a child. They don't get married. They don't have. They don't want to have kids. They don't have kids. But Hashem doesn't ask the parents. God forbid, him, when something is happening, is going to happen to the kid. Hey, you, you, you wanted you wanted me wanted the father. So am I going to do this to you? This child? Are you? Huh? Are you part of that? I mean, are you? Are, are, are no, you, caprando. What? No caprando. Okay, God forbid it. Something happened to a child. Right. Okay, you're telling me it's God, it's the mother and the father, right? We are all partner. They're all partner. But Hashem doesn't come to the parents and say... Oh, let's know, discuss if we should... Uh, they're not equal partners, she's saying. They're not equal partners, but they're co-partners. Yes, they're not. Hashem is uh, 99% and they're 1%, let's say. Or let's say 50-50, okay? Bottom line is, bottom line is, the parents do have free choice to have them or not to have them. And because the parents had a choice to have them or not to have them, therefore the Torah says, because your existence is because your parents chose to have you. But many children are born just because people have relations, not because they were thinking to have a child. By the way, just for the definition, even if you're not married and you have a child, there's still a father and a mother. That's what I'm saying. Many okay, so. children are born not because parents wanted a child. That's my point. One minute. They, 
It's not uh, they got pregnant with uh, in the air. They did something. They chose to do something. They're not choosing to do something, intimacy, that could make a woman pregnant. They chose to do. And they chose not to abort. Well, no, but not even that. It's they chose to have the baby from the, the from the conception. Yeah. No, I'm saying it's more than not even that. The whole existence to have a baby came about because they did what they did. I mean, <laughs> you know how many times you see boys and girls and the girl wasn't supposed to, wasn't supposed to get pregnant and and they said no, it was a mistake. What do you mean a mistake? She didn't get pregnant uh, from the air. Yeah, obviously you did something. So what do you mean it was a mistake? You didn't know that this could happen? Of course it could happen. Okay, divide it. <coughs> How do you see this, Mitzi? you say, therefore, the bottom line, the reason why the child exists is totally ba'avayim shimbali b'chira b'zad, they have the free choice. Al-kein nikr shutfim. Therefore, they're called shutfim. Therefore, what's the definition of a shutuf? Shituf? They have a say in the matter. To do it or not to do it. Like we learned many times, this Rebbe is going to elaborate on it now. There's a Gemara, it's Chamer Lamar, it's Lesakia. The wine belongs to the owner, and you say thank you to the waiter. Why are you saying thank you to the waiter? It's, it's not his wine, right? Somebody drives you in a car, we said this many times, yeah? A guy gives you a ride. You say thank you to him or to her. You don't say thank you to the car. Why do they say thank you to them? Again, because they had a choice to do it or not to do it. And therefore, you're thanking them for the choice of doing it. Cutting a cake. You don't say thank you to the knife. You say thank you to the one that cut the cake. Why? Because they had a choice. To, the knife didn't have a choice to do it or not to do it. Okay. Then came moving, top of the page, no, hey, the marshal, yes, bechira chofshis. Something that doesn't have free choice. Opel bedarechach. And it works in a way that is forced to do it. And the tayer, le inyan ashitov. You cannot say they're a partner in it. What do you mean they're not a partner in it? O kamei haod at shimimana yetzelach. Right? Bread that comes from the earth, from the ground. Shazed and Chita bought it. You plant a seed in the ground. The yard of Shamim and rain comes down. Matzmiach Bekecha Tzmiach Shabbat it. Right? Then the thing grows. Ein Ha'aretz Bal Bechita Bezeh Shol Yitz Mucho Achitim. The earth has no say or free choice. Uh, one day the earth gets up in a bad mood. <laughs> says, okay, I'm not going to have anything grow today. Doesn't work like that. Because the power of growth that the earth has is the power of vegetation. It automatically grows things. The earth has absolutely no say. Just like he's going to explain. The sun and the moon have no say whether they should shine or not shine. Cut up in the east and set in the west. They have absolutely no free choice in it. If they have no free choice, they should be given no credence and no thank you and no worshiping to and no nothing. Something that has a free choice, like your parents, then the Torah says, because they had the choice to do it or not to do it, so there's a mitzvah. Somebody does something good for you, you say thank you because they had the choice to do it or not to do it. But it's self-understood that I was saying that something that has no choice to do it or not to do it, so what are you think, saying thank you for? Um, what the Pasuk says, what Rashi interprets it to mean, there's certain tfua that comes from the sun, and certain melons that grow from the moon. There's no... Free, free choice that the sun has to make things grow or one day the sun gets up in a bad mood and says, say you know what today nothing's growing it has no choice in the matter whatsoever there's no free choice in the sun or not to shine light 
or the one day the sun's going to come out and say, you know what? Today I'm going to make a cold uh, light, a uh, cold air. Again, there's no absolutely no say. that's not going to be cold. Valkane, and therefore agam yodom, even though warmth comes through the sun, the grains come through the sun and the moon, and the tailem in yinashitov. You can't call them partners in Hashem in sustaining the world. Shareim kagazim biyadachetiv. It's only the axe in the hand of the chopper. Kamei kagazim shachetiv evanim in our Just like the axe, the chops. You're not going to say thank you. You'll give credence to the. Uh, okay.